Hello, hello. Welcome to Just Vintage Crochet. Today I want to do this very simple little 1950s bonnet style headband. When I saw this, I thought to myself, now that's got to be just about one of the most cutest things I've ever seen. And you know what? I need a little break. Uh, I want to work, but I just want a little break from things that are super duper difficult. So this time I'm choosing to make something very simple, easy, and relaxed for us. Something that can be a quick make that or we can gift out and just whatever we want to do. So let's make this really cute 1950s bonnet style headband. What we will need is some number four worsted weight or Aran weight, if you understand Aran weight term easier, and a 3F 3.75 millimeter hook. Okay, let's go ahead and start with a chain of four. Oh, I need to leave a long tail for weaving in. Okay. Start with a chain of four, three, four. We're gonna work one single crochet. Let's work in the back bumps. One single crochet into each of the next three stitches, skipping the first chain. So basically in the second chain from the hook, work one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. Oops. There we go. Now it does say to chain and turn one, and of course you can do that, but if you want a nice straight edge, a, a, a smooth, clean edge, I would just turn and not chain one at all. Now work one single crochet into the first stitch. And we're actually going to be working back loop only, but again, my own personal recommendation, you can just immediately jump right into the back loop on the first stitch, but if you want a nice clean edge, work into both loops for your first and last stitches only. So I will work in the whole stitch for the first stitch and then work two, I'm sorry, three single crochet into the back loop only of the next stitch, which will be the middle stitch, and then one single crochet into the last stitch or into the last back loop only. I really recommend working that full stitch though. It'll give you a nice clean look. It's already giving us a clean look. Okay, now again, I would recommend no chaining, just turn, and we're gonna work one single crochet Back loop only, every row will be worked back loop only, but my personal recommendation with the exception of the first and the last stitch. Just work one single crochet over each stitch. Those uh, three that we worked into the same stitch was an increase. Okay. Now again, I would recommend no chaining, just turn, and we're gonna work an increase again. So we're gonna work one stitch into each of the next two, three into the middle, and then one into each of the last two. So I do work the full stitch, then I work back loop only, three into the middle stitch, one, two, three, and then one into each of the last two. Of course, I'm gonna work the full last stitch. And I'm not going to chain, I'm gonna turn, work that first full stitch and work one single crochet into each stitch across. This is basically how the pattern is going to be worked until you reach a certain point. Let's do this one more time without chaining. I'm gonna turn, work that first stitch, and I'm gonna work one, two, three stitches. Then I'm gonna work my increase. So I already worked my first, that's one, two, three in a row, working our way up to the increase. Now we're at the increase, and we work three into the back loop of that stitch. Now we're going to work the last three stitches, just one single crochet into each. Okay. 
Oops. Okay, and then the next row, every other row will be an increase row and every other row will be a non-increase row. So this is a non-increase row, so we're just gonna work one single crochet into each stitch across. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now the next row will be an increase row. So I'm going to look at what I have here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That leaves us with one in the middle. So that's one, two, three, four. Work my increase of three into that middle top stitch and then four back down to the end. And then the next row will be a non-increase row where we just work one single crochet into each stitch across. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So we have eleven which means the next row we're going to work five stitches before we work our increase. We'll work our increase and then work five stitches down. Every other row, just work one more stitch on that increase row than, this, than what you worked in the increase row before. So this is a non-increase row. So here, no, this is an increase row, forgive me. So we go one, two, three, four, five, increase, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, and five. So the instructions tell us to continue to work this way until we have a total of 33 stitches across the row. Then you come on back and I'll show you what we're gonna do next. So just remember, every other row is an increase row. We started with an odd number, which is one. We increased on two. So every even row, if you wanted to use a stitch counter, a row counter, every even row is an increase row. But mostly, just stop and come back whenever you have 33 stitches across, okay? And look how clean those edges are without chaining one and turning and working into the full stitch on each end. Beautiful, clean. Now with this pattern, we will be working into the tops of these ridges here. And our it's just laid out for us. We don't even have to guess where the tops of those stitches are right there, right there. Very, very easy. And that is because we worked into the full stitch. Okay. I will be right back whenever I have 33 stitches across. Okay, I have 33 stitches across. Let's check some measurements for reference. Now the yarn I'm using is ever so slightly thinner than um, like a common worsted weight or a common Aran weight. It's just the brand, it's just ever so slightly thinner as you can see. So it's okay if if it doesn't match up to with what I have exact. I have six and a half inches across from point to point. If you come up with six and three quarters, that's gonna be fine. It's really not that big of a deal. Okay, oh, and I suppose I can measure it this way for you as well. That way you know where I'm at here. I'm at right at about seven and a quarter inches, okay? So now what the pattern wants us to do is, is no more increases. Now we're going to work until we have nine inches. So we're just gonna work back and forth, back and forth as we have been, um, no increasing though, until we measure out nine inches. I have seven and a quarter. I will come back whenever I have nine. I don't know exactly how many rows that will be. 
um, but it doesn't really matter because we're working with measurements. So here we go. Just go into the first stitch and we are not going to be working any more increases. So this is the part of the headband that's gonna go over the top of our head. After this, we will begin to work decreases. Okay, so I will be back whenever I am at a total of nine inches from beginning to the nine inch mark. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, I have reached the nine inches I need. I suppose it would be fair for me to show you in centimeters as well. Looks like 23 centimeters. Okay, so now let's start working our decrease row. And decreases are gonna be a lot like the increases, only we're gonna take away three stitches in the middle every other row instead of adding. Let's start with 15 stitches until our decrease stitch. So one, two, again, working in back loop only for all of these rows, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. Now we are going to work over the next three stitches, pull up, go into the back loop, pull up a loop, next stitch over, repeat, next stitch over, repeat. You should have four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all four. That just decreased three stitches into one. Now work the next 15 stitches to the end. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and then I'm going to work through the last two, through the last full stitch, and that's fifteen. Then I'm going to turn and now I'm going to work one row with no decreases. And then the next row will be 14 stitches before the decrease. The next row after that, no decreases. The next row after that will be 13 stitches before the decreases. And you will continue to work this way until you have three stitches left. And then don't cut. We're going to carry on from there. I'll be right back. Okay, working my last stitch and turn. Now we're going to work 14 stitches before the decrease. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, and 14. Now we're going to pick up loops from the next three stitches. So one, next stitch over, two, and one more, three, that makes four loops on our hook. Pull through all four, 14 stitches left to work to the end. Then you will turn and the next row will be just a plain row, no decrease. Next row after that, 13 stitches before the decrease. Okay, so I will be back whenever I have three stitches left on my hook, or no, whenever I have three stitches left, and then we will carry on from there. Okay, now working into the last stitch through both loops, and there we go. And those edges look beautiful, don't they? In my humble, Apparently not so humble opinion. I really think they look great. They look nice and clean. Okay, I now have my three stitches left. 
So let's go ahead and clean up these edges. They're clean, but they want us to work a round of single crochet around all of the edges. So let's chain one this time and into the, here is the top of our last stitch. Just turn it to the side and here is the side of our last stitch. It wants us to work one single crochet in each ridge. Well, you have a ridge on this side and you have a ridge on this side. So we're gonna work into each ridge, starting with this one one single crochet, now the top of this ridge, there's another. Now we can go into the dent of this ridge, which is the outside of this ridge, and then the top of this one, and the indentation of this one, and then the top, and there we go. Into each stitch, each ridge that you can see and each indentation, we're going to work a single crochet. And because we worked one single crochet into both loops on each side, those stitches are so easily available. We can see them. There you go. There's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. You can just see them so easily. You don't have to try to figure it out. Okay. And you can see on the picture, there we go. And that is one stitch over each ridge, meaning the ridges that you can see and the ridges on the other side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So let's work one ridge all the way down to the other end and I will be right back when we get down to this end here. Okay. Now I have worked my single crochets all the way to the end into the last stitch. Let's go ahead and chain one and turn our work. I'm going to weave my tail in a little bit here and into that same stitch that our last stitches worked into, work another single crochet. Into the next stitch over, work a single crochet. Now let's make a chain that measures 10 inches. I'll let you know how many chains that is. I'll be right back. Okay, so that was 45 chains. Now into the second chain from the hook, work a slip stitch. I would work in the back bump. It'll make a nice clean tie. Work a slip stitch into each chain, a nice loose slip stitch. If you make these too tight, your chain will buckle, your tie will buckle. So you want these to be nice and loose, just like that. Okay, I'll be back whenever I get back down to the base of this chain. Okay, I've got two chains left to work into. There we go. All right, and now I'm going to work a single crochet into the last single crochet of the three that were here at the top. There we go. Okay, and that is our necktie. Now chain one and into that same stitch we just worked into. We're now going to turn and work this way exactly as we did before. And then you're just gonna repeat all of this done at the other end. There we go. And I'm gonna weave a bit of this tail in along the way. Okay. And I'll be right back. I'm gonna go ahead and work my way down to the other end and work the chain. And then I will finish off this round with you. And then we will work on our final detail, which is optional in my opinion. I don't think you have to do it, but I think it also looks very nice. So I'll be right back. Okay, all done. And I have both of my, all of my tails weaved in. So here's what it wants us to do now. First, I'm gonna find where I weaved in at. Okay, that's the underneath. I mean, they're both really kind of 
the same, but I want where my tails were weaved in at to be the underneath. So it says to take our yarn and work it doubled over. So I'm gonna pull a whole lot of it out. And there we go. And then just take it and double it over. There we go. Bringing the two halves together like this, making a long, thick strand. And you can do this with a single strand. I practice with a single strand and it looks just as pretty. It's just not as chunky, that's all. And if you want less chunk, then don't double up. It really does look quite nice. Okay. So, here we go. I'm going to start right here at the base and I'm just gonna go right in there and don't pull up like that because that's how you work single strand. You need to treat that like a tail and there you go, just like that. Okay, pull that on through. So what we're doing is, this is the right side of the work facing you need to go into your work from the right side down so that you can pull it up from the bottom. Our work, our working yarn is going to remain at the bottom. Okay, tension your yarn. Draw up a little bit. Now go into the next space up, I would say about a half an inch up. Try to keep it as centered as possible. Then you want to yarn over and pull that through. There we go. And then we're going to do that again. Pull up a little bit and then find another space about a half an inch up. Let's yarn over and pull that on through and then pull up about a half an inch. Go into the next space up. If some of them are longer or shorter than others, that's really okay, this is handmade. We are not perfect, our work is not supposed to be perfect. Here we go, just go up into this space right here. Yarn over, pull that, nope, I only pulled one through. Yarn over, pull that on through, if it wants to come through. <laughs> Here we go, pull up again about a half inch, go into the next space up. Okay, so you get it now. We're gonna do this all the way to the other end. Then you're just gonna work your last slip stitch, because that's what these are, it's basically they're slip stitches, and then uh, tie off and weave in your ends. I'll be right back whenever I am all done working my detail. Okay, here is the finished product. I just kind of did her hair like this. It's kind of cute. There we go. And then I'll tuck her hair back behind it, but I just wanted to show you that is how it looks. Let me twist her here for you. There we go. Okay. Okay. Here it is with the hair tucked back behind. Very cute still. Oh, it's cute. It's fun. There we go. Yeah, that is actually really cute. Go, kind of a side swept bang. I really like this. I really do think it's cute. Oh, that is kind of cute. There we go. The wig is kind of a mess. <laughs> and there we go. That's cute. Okay. All right, you guys. That's gonna be it. Let me bring you back over to the couch. Okay, here is how that stitching turned out. I had a little bit of a wonky over here in the middle. I noticed I was going too far. Here we go, maybe it was from this direction. I was going too far in this direction, so I had to just come over one little space. And so, you know, but it's okay. Again, this is handmade. It's not supposed to be perfect. We are not machines. I still think it looks good, I do. Here's how it looks on the underside. 
I think it turned out quite nice. Cute, simple little pattern. You can make them in all kinds of colors, variegated. You can border it in a totally different color with different straps and an accent braid. I think it's very, very cute. And honestly, I think that this would make great gifts, great little stocking stuffers and everything. So never too early to get started on this coming Christmas season. I love you guys so much. And remember, you can pick up this pattern. There is a link down below so you can have this one with you forever and ever and always. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.